Hey everybody, happy Valentine's Day. I am Stacy with New Creations by Stacy. I'm the owner and artist and I'm an elite Dixie Belle retailer here at the Rustic Willow in Ardmore, Alabama. So if you guys watching tonight are local, definitely come in and see us. Um, otherwise, just say hey where you're watching from. I know it's Valentine's Day which I didn't really realize when I scheduled this live, so I'm not sure we'll have a whole lot of people on. Hopefully everybody is having fun tonight um, with their family, but I am coming on. We're actually gonna be working on this massive piece behind me. Um, I'm sitting on a stool and it's, it's at least 72 inches tall, I think closer to 80 inches. But um, before we get started, and I'll kind of go through what I've already done and what we're going to be doing tonight, some raised stenciling and some blending, I'm kind of far from the camera, so I'm trying to see as everybody comments. Um, but Dixie Mall may be on with us tonight to help answer questions. Um, oh, hey. So they may be on with us tonight to help answer questions. Um, in the description, I do have the products that we're going to be using tonight. Uh, I also have my affiliate link, um, so you can order through that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, it just kind of helps support us that do the lives. Hey, you know what? I should have put my glasses on. I've got to keep the camera so far back because this piece is so big so you guys can see it. Oh, hey, watching it from England. Wow, it must be pretty late there. But um, so also in the description outside of that, you can also find your local retailer through the affiliate link if you want to go in, see the products in person. Um, I also have the link to the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group. There's some amazing artists in there. Um, they post all the time with some beautiful inspiration pieces. And um, if you're ever feeling not too creative. Um, oh, hey, in Australia. Oh, hey, Philippa. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. And like I said, there is a product list of what we're going to be using tonight. Um, so this piece here, so I did a post on my page. Oh, I do have a link to my Facebook page as well, so you can see more of my work. Um, you can also see other videos. I'm live every Friday at 5 on there. And, um, and I do post the pieces as I finish them as well, so you can see how they turn out. Um, my goodness. I, oh, hey, Wanda. Oh, I'm glad to see you tonight. How are you? Wanda's working on a massive project. She's local here. Um, so I haven't seen her in a little bit. But um, so what I've done already is I've cleaned this piece, of course, with white lightning. That was the first thing I did. Uh, I also went ahead and did a scuff sand on it. Um, the finish was pretty slick and it was pretty well intact. Uh, so, and I'm going with a very dark color, so I didn't have to worry about priming it with boss um, because I did the scuff sand, and I actually used my sander with a 120 grit sandpaper. Oh, hey, Dixie Bell is on tonight. Um, so I did use a 120 grit uh, sandpaper with my sander. I didn't completely sand it, though. I just kind of ran it over. Um, I didn't want to do it by hand just because this piece is so big but you can scuff sand it by hand as well. It's just really roughing it up. Um, so in addition to that, I also added um, all of these Would You Bend keyhole pieces. And this up here, um, I'm actually gonna run this all the way across, but I added some of these Would You Bend pieces as well. Um, I, these are corner pieces and I just cut off the trim and I kind of manipulated them a little bit so that they would fit into that space. Um, and like I said, I have quite a bit more molding work to do up here. I actually just started this piece today. Um, so I also went ahead and filled in all of my, let me shift you guys down a little bit. Um, I also went ahead and filled in all of my um, hardware holes because I'll be replacing those out with Dixie Mud. And of course, this had one of those lovely shell designs. Um, and so I went ahead and put Dixie Mud all over this. I haven't sanded it back or anything yet. This design here, you will be able to, once I sand it back, you will be able to see the outline of it. So I'm actually gonna do quite a bit of molding over here 
and decorate this all out with Would You Bend. I just didn't have time to do all of it today. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, like I said, no primer. I didn't use Boss or Slick Stick on it. And I did go ahead and put a base coat of Anchor in Silk on here. And the reason I did that, I am actually going to hand paint um, probably a rose over here. Well, I know I'm going to do a rose. I just don't know if I'm just going to do one big one or multiple ones. Um, so I wanted that base on here because I did not use Boss. Silk has um, a blocking primer in it. So this is Cherry. It will be a bleeder in the places that I kind of went through to the wood. Um, and although it, you won't see it show up with the black, it will show up when I come in and if I use any really light colors on my rose, it could potentially bleed through those. So, um, I just figured I'd get a nice base coat because I want this, this is mainly going to be in caviar and hurricane gray, a blend. Um, so I want, um, that blocker for the later colors that I'm going to do. And I don't think that I need two coats just because um, I don't anticipate a lot of bleeding. There would just be a couple areas that I would be concerned about. Um, so that's kind of what the plan is here. And we're actually on the side here going to be doing some raised stenciling. And that's what we're going to start off with tonight. Um, oh, thanks. And that's what we're going to start off with tonight. So I'm going to kind of move you guys around. I've already got some of the raid stenciling done on the other side. So once we put this on, I'm going to spin you around so you can see kind of what you do um, to even it out, which is super simple. And then we're going to go ahead and start blending on the front section here. So I'm going to kind of lift you guys up a little bit. Like I said, this piece is massive. Oh, hey, Gina. So I can read the comments a little bit better now. Um, so for the raised stenciling, we're going to actually be working with um, the Victorian Damask. Just so you can kind of see, let me back up so you can see the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just start by placing it first. Just want to make sure you guys can kind of see the whole thing. We're going to pretty much be doing the top section here. Um, so I want to, I'm not running it all the way up to the top. I'm not too worried about that. I may be putting some trim on here. I really want to deck this out and make it a really elegant, um, a really elegant piece. So I'm fine with this right up here. If that's something though that you're concerned about, um, I do also cut up a lot of my stencils. So this is the Royal Damask, and you can see where I cut it all the way to the side so it fits in. So this is something you can do. I just decided not to do it with this particular stencil. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't use, you can use tack spray to spray it up. Um, hey, Jackie. Uh, you can use um, tack spray to spray it up, but I never use that. A lot of times I find it leaves like a... A sticky kind of residue that I don't want to clean up. So I normally just tape my pieces in place. And I want the edge to be right along this indent right here. So I'm just kind of placing it where I want it to be there. And then what I'm going to do, actually, you know what? I'm going to run it over so I can tape it a little bit easier. Let me just make sure I've got it straight. And what I'm doing is I'm running my tape up where I want that raised stencil to stop. And that way I can make sure it's pretty flat. So you see over here, though, I have an overlap, so I'll have to kind of bend that in. Um, and you'll kind of see how we're going to do that once we start with the raised stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and tape all the way down this line. And you guys, I this might take a little bit, so I'm not sure how much of the blending part I'll get to on here. Um, hopefully I can get some of it knocked out. I'll try to do this pretty quickly. 
I'm just running this all the way down the line because I don't want my Dixie mud, which is what we're going to be using tonight, to um, overlap any. So I just want to make sure that my tape is nice and stuck down. I'm just getting it in all those grooves because that's the only place that's going to stick. And then, you know, I'm fantastic about losing stuff on a live, especially. <laughs> so I just don't, oh, I set my blue tape over here. So you guys, um, this is just my preference. And while we're doing this, I use blue tape because it's more cost effective for stuff like this. But if I'm doing stripes or anything like that, and if you've watched me before, I typically will use frog tape. It's a little more expensive, but um, even though this is a clean release tape, sometimes it has some issues, um, and I never have that problem with the frog tape. So I'm not really, actually, I don't think I'm going to tape down this side. I didn't earlier, because if I tape it down, I'll have less give to push it in so that I can get closest to that corner. So we're going to be using, like I said, Dixie Mud um, to do this. And we're going to, well, I'm going to explain in a minute. This is black Dixie Mud, though, um, which is what I used on the front as well. It goes on black, but it dries gray. However, I was running out of black once I did the raised stencil on the other side. So I had a little white, um, but I did not want to use white. Just because if that paint shows or it chips anywhere, that white is a stark contrast to, um, you know, to the color scheme that I'm using, which is why I wanted to go black. So what I did was I took my black Dixie mud, what I had left of it, and I took a little bit of what I had left in my white, and I mixed those together. So it is a little gray right now, and it will dry to a lighter gray. Um, but the Dixie Mud does come in brown, um, black, and white. So to apply it, you can use like a spatula like this, which we do carry as well. Oh, hey, Jennifer. Um, or, so I like to use this little tool. And this is, um, this is actually out of the uh, silkscreen stencils. It comes in a pack of silk screen stencils, and I really like it for doing my raised stencils. Um, we also have a thingamajig tool that you can use. Um, I don't have one of those out right now, though. So the bad thing about this is it doesn't fit down in your cup really well. So actually, I'll show you. You can do this both ways. Um, I'm going to put some on a plate over here to work with. But I'll start off. It's not a lot of difference between using this tool and the other one. Hey, Jerry. All right, let me make sure. Let me bring you guys over a little bit. So that way I'm not blocking your view of what we're doing. Raise you up some. There we go. So I'm just going to start on this side over here. And I like to hold it down where I'm where I'm working at, and you're just gonna slide, you're just gonna kind of scrape your Dixie Mud down. So I almost always use Dixie Mud whenever I do a raised stencil. Um, and by the way, if you're using like white, you can tint it with paint. It does thin out a bit though whenever you tint it with paint, so you wanna make sure that you don't add a whole lot of paint to it. Um, but that's a way that you can get kind of the color that you wanted. I considered adding caviar to this um, to darken it up since I didn't have enough of the black. But uh, I went ahead and um, I didn't want to thin it out too much. So you can also, another thing that you can do, let's say I painted this and I didn't... Um, I decided after the fact that I wanted to do a raised stencil. So if you do something like that, um, you can use like the sea spray texture additive and you can mix that. And I really do like mixing that for a raised stencil with paint. Um, that turns out really nicely. And I've done a live on that before as well. Uh, 
So I'm just making sure that I'm getting it nice and smooth. I mean, I'll inevitably have some peaks on here. Um, and you wanna kind of make sure too that you kind of scrape back as much as you want to while you're working in that section. Because if I get all the way down to the bottom and then I come back here to, to scrape it back, it will, um, it'll be kind of a little bit dry and sometimes you can actually pull it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over and use my thingamajig tool. Um, or not my thingamajig, sorry. My piece that comes in the silk screen stencil. So you see that goes on really fast, but I actually, you get ridges with that tool, or I do anyway. So I like to pull it down I find that I can get more smooth. I can get it more smooth when I use this tool here. But it does go on faster. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna use this, uh, this scraper here. And um, I'll come back and go over it with my other tool here. And I will use that other tool when I get to this side because I'll need to be more, um, more careful because of that edge. So you don't wanna press down too hard when you're doing this either because it's easy, especially if you're working with a, um, a stencil with a lot of intricate details like down here, it's easy to catch one of these little pieces and for it to um, kind of smear underneath. So I think I probably just did it a little bit there. But you know, once you paint over this, even if you have a section like that, well, first of all, you can clean it up. And I use a brush to clean it up. But... Um, <coughs> I um I don't too much care usually because once you put paint over this, it all kind of blends together. I'm just trying to get this edge over here a little bit. And see with this tape, it's staying stuck down well enough um, that it doesn't too much matter that I'm not using the tacky spray. I do find I can get in the details a little bit better too with the... Um, with the tool that comes with the silk screen stencils. That's another reason I do like to use that. And especially in smaller areas. So I'm just scooping up, you can see about how much I'm using. Yes, actually most of the time when I do a raised stencil, um, I, what I actually, so some people will um, just go over it with their finger, but a lot of times I like to be more precise depending on the look I'm going for. So usually, so it is raised up enough that you can do that, but usually I will, um, usually I'll just lay the, the stencil right back over it and then go over it with like gilding wax or whatever. So on this piece, I'm planning to do um, gold highlights. And I haven't decided yet 100% if I'll do it on the sides or not. Um, but if I do, I will more than likely uh, put this stencil, just lay it right back over. Because then I can quickly go and just do the gilding wax all over. I don't have to be as careful. I'm just using the excess here that I took off earlier from smoothing this out. And we're almost to the edge over here. So I love the look that this creates. And I tell you what too, if you're blending and 
you feel like you're not the best blender, it is easier to me to blend over a, um, it's easier to me to blend over a raised surface. And sometimes when you're doing like a long section like this with blending, like the sides, those are usually the harder areas. So what I'm gonna do here, and I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, but I'm actually going to hold this down. And I think I'm gonna have to get, well, I could use my other hand here. So I'm not going all the way over to the edge just because I know that I'm likely going to have a little bit of, uh, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it bleed through um, because that edge is not all the way stuck down. But I'm not too worried about getting right in there. If I was, and there are pieces that I do that I am more concerned about that. And I do use a little less product when I'm going over the edge like this. Um, but I would normally cut my stencil down if, um, I wanted it all the way to the edge there and I wanted it to be perfect, but I'm not worried about that right now because what I'm doing on this piece, it's just not going to require me to be so precise. So we're almost done here. And you guys, if I'm missing any questions, um, I will come back and answer them after the live. So let's see, I'm just gonna hold this down. And you see, I'm not going all the way over to the edge. I can't kind of press it down as well with my tool and that helps a little bit also. Um, I'm just trying to dig out the rest of this from the bottom of the jar. So let's see here. I've got a little excess over there which I might have to end up cleaning up um, when I come back and I could have offloaded it over here in this section first and then done that, um, and that would have given it, made it a little bit more precise. So I'm just going to kind of go down here like this and I am going to come back up here because I did not offload it and I've got a bit of a glob that I don't want. So I'm gonna kind of come down, wipe that bit of a glob off. And I'm pushing down with my tool here so that my stencil is flat when I'm going over this. And I actually just went over the bottom, but that's fine, I can wipe that off. So now one thing about this Dixie Mud um, is you don't want to wash it down your drain. So, you know, the easiest thing to do would be to throw my stencil in the drain to get all of this off, but um, unfortunately, this will cause an issue with your pipes over time, so you do not want to um, put it down the drain. Normally, if I'm on a live and it's not winter time, <laughs> I just hose it off outside, um, which I did earlier today, but after a live, I will normally put it, um, I have like a, a raggedy towel laid out. I'll put it on there and um, put it on that towel and then spray it with water to keep it kind of wet and moist. And then I'll clean it up after the live. Um, it's kind of messy, but with, you know, water and paper towels. You can also put it in a big like cookie sheet so that way it doesn't... Um, on a live, I always do it on a towel. 
but it gets flaky afterwards so it makes a big mess so like a big cookie sheet is great for cleaning it off um or also a uh let me take this piece of tape off down here i want to be careful taking it off because you can smear it um like i said i'm not too particularly worried about that happening because I'm not trying to make it perfect. So I have some peaks over here and I'm gonna leave those alone. I'm gonna let them dry. I don't know if you can see, but like right here, right here, right there. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna let it dry and then once it's dry, you're not gonna see that by the time I paint it and go down with the rest of the stencil. So I will let this section dry and then this is a repeating stencil so once that's dry, I'll line this up and I'll go down and do the rest of the bottom. Um, so let me spray this off right quick. I just don't want it to get too hard um, before this is over. So like I said, on these peaks, I'm going to show you kind of what... We're gonna do to those. I'm just gonna spin this around so you can see the other side. And I don't quite have as many peaks on this side. Um, and I'll try to bring you in too so you can kind of see the depth. I know there was a question about the depth. Actually, I might have to move the camera over here. I don't know if I'm gonna quite make it. Um, yeah, actually, I'll probably just move the camera over. I've just got that stencil in the way. Oh, no. Actually, I am going to make it. All right. So you can kind of see what the other side looks like. So this side was done purely with the black Dixie mud. And you can see that it dries to kind of almost the color of hurricane gray, which is good. That's that's definitely what I want. Um so I'm going to go ahead and over here, I have some of those same peaks. It looks a little bit different once it's settled and once it's dried. So to smooth it out, um, a lot of times actually I want to use a, a more fine grit. So these are our rad pads, by the way. Um, let me show you. So they come like this. Um, and this isn't a requirement to carry. I do carry it here in the store, but um, you can contact your local store and see if they carry. But it has four different grits that it comes with. It's like a medium, a fine, a super fine, and a very fine. Um, so it goes all the way from like 120 to 600 grits. Um, and I prefer to use a fine grit with this just because it doesn't require a lot of sanding. Um, yeah, you know what? That is so funny. Melinda just said that she knows I'm going to paint the sides. But the, after I did this, I thought, oh my gosh, I think I want to do, wouldn't this be pretty if you like painted the encasing and then you had like your drawers and you just stained them first um, with like no paint gel stain and then put the, the stencil over. I was thinking, you know, that's exactly what I was thinking earlier. And I was like, oh, I've got to do that. Um, it is really pretty, and I've actually done that with, well, it was over paint, but I have left the white before. So you can very lightly um, sand over this to get those peaks off. And I'm being very careful because you can see how that's just dropping down. It comes off very, very quickly. So I just want to smooth that out. So let's say I hadn't used the um, silkscreen stencil tool that left it more smooth. Um, I didn't use the I didn't use the scraper at all on this side. Um, but let's say I did it and I had those ridges. You can actually I've got a little peak right here actually. Um, you can actually just very lightly go over it like this and knock those out a little bit. Um, this is actually pretty smooth, uh, what I did earlier, so I don't really need to do anything else there. So before you would paint this or anything, though, I would take a, a tack cloth, and I will a little bit later, take a tack cloth and just go over all of this so I get all the dust off. 
so that way it's ready for my paint. Um, so you guys, I've got about 15 minutes, um, so we can go ahead and start painting on the front. I've just got to roll this around and I'm kind of stuck here. This piece is so heavy. I'm sure you can imagine. Um, I mean, look how tall. <laughs> I'm five foot six and, and this piece is huge. It is on rollers, but it's not raised up that much. <laughs> All right, so actually I'm gonna leave it here, I think. And we're gonna go ahead and just start painting. Um, and I'll try to be quick. So like I said, I'm going to, I'm actually going to start with caviar because I've got these would you bends on here. And like I said, I went over this with um, silk and anchor. Also, one other tip here. Um, one other tip here. The silk also has a coat of protectant in it. And the Dixie Mud will, it will react to water. So if I would just immediately start to blend on that Dixie Mud, that it would activate a little bit and kind of, uh, you'd get like little, it's like little grainy things that end up um, in there. So one thing might be doing the base coat in silk, I'm actually creating a barrier uh, for when I start blending on it with the Caviar and Hurricane Gray um, so that it'll, it'll protect it and keep it from moving around. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually start with a little bit of caviar and I'm going to be using my French tip brush here so that I can really get in. I can see where I've missed a few spaces and the wood is really showing through there. Um, you know, sometimes I do... I do it all kinds of different ways. Um, so Casey asked if you lay down a coat of paint before the would you bend. So if I'm using like slick stick or if I'm using boss, I lay that down first and then I put the would you bend on it. Um, sometimes I, I, I very, very rarely put the would you bend on last um, because I don't know if it's just me. I know that people do it, but no matter what I do, and I know some little tips and tricks for cleaning up the glue and everything, but I feel like you can see that glue here and there, even if it's just a little speck. So I never put it on last. But sometimes I will put a coat of paint on and I'll think, oh, I need to dress this up some. And then I will go back and, um, and put the would you bend over a coat of paint. So I'm really just spraying each one of these because the more wet, that um, the more wet it is, your paint is when you're going around, like would you bend or molding, the easier it is when that paint is thinned out, the easier it is to get it into all those little, little grooves and to make sure you have really good coverage. So I wasn't able to see the, the second part of your question. Um, because the read more wouldn't work on the live here. <laughs> but I will go back and look at that and answer it um, once I'm off of here. So I'm just swirling my French tip brush in here uh, so that I can make sure that I have really nice, good coverage and all of the grooves. And this is, I love, I love this brush um, for this. And I almost always do this when I have molding or would you bends or whatever else that's very intricate and detailed. But also, I like to use this for wax too. Um, it's really a great multi-purpose brush. So I'm just swirling this to make sure I get everything in. Because once I start blending, I don't want to have to worry about these details. Um, I want to make sure that I have that coverage there. When I'm blending, I want to worry about how my colors are coming together. And that's all I want to worry about. So I think I've now got, you have to always get at like a bunch of different angles here. Um, 
So yeah, now I've got all of that taken care of. And I'm actually considering using, just so you know, the this script transfer. Once I get my rows on here, I may use, and I don't know, I may want to do it raised. So I may come back and tent C spray and do another raised stencil on here. It just depends. I'll decide on that once I get closer to the end. So that's all I'm going to do with this brush. And we've got about 10 minutes, so I can at least get started here. So I'm going to be using Hurricane Gray, but the majority of this I do want to be black. Hold on, let me... Well, I'm having some issues getting this paint out. I might just open it up and... I haven't used Hurricane Gray in a little while. And so I think I've got my, yeah, I do. It's clogged. So I'm just gonna pour some Hurricane Gray on here. I'm gonna do some mixing on my, um, probably on my plate here as well. So let me get some more caviar out because I do want this to be nice and dark. I only want a touch of a highlight in the gray. So I'll be blending probably a little bit differently than usual. Um, so if, so I did, I did a coat of silk on here because I wanted a base coat and I didn't want to have to put a coat of protectant on to create that barrier in between um, the mud and my, you know, paint when I'm putting a lot of water on it. So, to save myself a step, I used silk because I'm, I'm using chalk mineral paint to actually paint and blend, but I use silk because it gives me my base coat. It gives me a little bit of blocker, so when I come in with lighter colors on this flower, it will, I won't have any potential bleed through. And then also, um, it has a protectant in it, so it's creating a barrier for my mud, um, for spraying it. So that's actually why I chose to do my base coat in silk. Um, and you guys, if you guys have not tried silk yet, and they just came out with some amazing colors, but if you have not tried silk yet, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're doing a one color finish. I mean, it saves so many steps because it's, it's an all-in-one paint. So to start off with, I'm gonna be using an oval medium. Um, because most of this is going to be black, so I want my caviar. And then I'm going to be using an oval small for my um, Hurricane Gray. And then I've got my blending brush, which is the mini. These are all synthetic brushes. It's going to, it's a self-leveling paint, but it's going to help minimize brush strokes as well. So I've actually, let me set this on my small here. And... I'm gonna start over in this corner because I'm thinking I want all of this dark and I think I'm gonna blend up so this is my lighter area over on this side. That's what's in my head right now, but I will probably need to do two coats of this blend. So this is my first, kind of my first coat here. And so the chalk mineral paint glides over silk amazingly well. I'm gonna wet my brush down. So the brushes that I actually paint with that I'm not using to blend, those particular brushes, I like to start off with them wet. But my blending brush, I want to be dry. So this is my first coat, so I'm kind of laying out where I want my colors because I'm not 100% sure, but I know I want most of this black over in this section. Because if my rose is coming out of this corner, I want it to, um, I want it to really uh, come from the dark kind of into the light, I guess, is my thought process on it. I don't know if that's. <laughs> so right now I'm pretty much just using caviar. I haven't, um, 
gone to anything else. I'm keeping my brush nice and wet so that my paint's gliding right over. I think I'm gonna go, so I'm thinking this flower is gonna be about right here. So I think I'm probably gonna start my blend right around this section. And see, I don't have to worry too much around my would you bend. I can just quickly go over it because I use that French tip brush first. So now we're going to come down here because I want this at the bottom section to be dark as well. And I'm using quite a bit of paint on here. I'm getting really good coverage because I've got that silk. Probably going to add some molding up in here, so I'm not too worried about covering those edges. So I've got it. It's dragging in a couple places, but this is my first coat, so I'm not worried about that. I've got some little things flying around here, a little hair. Which, by the way, if you get those stuck in your paint, um... I gotta wipe that off. That was dust from my finger. If you get those stuck in your paint at the end, you can come through and do some um, very light sanding with one of those rad pads, the super fine, like a 600 grit, and you can get those out pretty easily. So I think that's where I just sprayed. I think that's where I'm gonna go ahead and start my blend up. wet that down some. Yeah, I think that's exactly. So what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to mix right on my plate here. I'm going to mix these two together with the same brush. I'll grab another brush if I want to. So it's a very soft black in the middle there. Um, yes, so true about the silk. Um, so I want to make this nice and wet. And I think I'm just going to bring this kind of over into this black. So this actually wasn't the way I intended to blend, but I'm really liking this. Um, so I think I'm going to go with it. I can always change it. I may not even need a second coat. We'll see how it comes out. So I'm going with that, that mix I just did. So it's very imprecise. I'm really mixing it on my plate as I'm going. And I just wanna keep it nice and wet here. And I'm still on the same brush. I actually didn't end up switching brushes. And as soon as I feel my paint start to drag, that's when I'm misting this. It's kind of warm in here under these lights, so it's drying pretty quickly. So I think what I'm going to do now is come in with my oval small, because I think I am going to go kind of light right over here. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to keep my colors this way, so... We'll see. So this, I'm just getting this put on. I'm gonna spray it again, and I'm gonna come in now with my blending brush. So this is a clean, dry brush. And I've got my paper towels here. I'm gonna start, ooh, that's really drying quick. I'm actually gonna start bringing these together. I'm not worried about this edge. I'm going to go clean that up later. And I'm going in different directions. Right now I haven't needed to wipe this off. I need to actually put a little bit more of that paint right here to bring that together. Whoops. Like I said, I'm not really worried about that edge. I'm more worried about this in here, how I'm bringing it together. Because I'll end up taking these drawers out again later and cleaning that up. 
So I kind of, let me just step back and take a look at this. So you didn't see me do this at all. I was simply blending it together. Oh, and on the camera, you have a really bad glare, but as it starts to dry, you'll see how it's coming together. Um, you'll see this is dry over here. That's why it looks like that way. This is all still wet over here. So you've got that glare. So I really like how that's coming together. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, well, I'm out of time, but let me, ah. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm out of time. Um, but I'll be working on this. Um, I've got a live Friday on my page, and I'm sure I'll be doing some blending on the sides over the raised stencil on there. Um, so if you like and follow me on Facebook, it'll send you a notification. It's 5 o'clock on Fridays. Um, and I'm sure next week I'll be working on this too because I want to go ahead and do, I want to go ahead and do the rose live as well. Um, and I'm going to do that with chalk paint also. So you guys, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. I'm sorry I didn't get further with the blending. Um, which piece turn out that was that the peacock piece? I actually, um, I staged it today. I've got to go in and fix the mirror part of it. Um, you know, cause you don't want to see like my transfers and my wall of paint back here in the mirror. Um, so I've got to fix the mirror image. I'll be posting it. I did post a sneak peek of it today, like the whole one side of it. Um, and I love it. I love the retro peacock. And then you guys, last week, if you were on last week, um, let's see here. If you guys were on, uh, hopefully I don't have, okay, I have a mess and I work in a mess. Um, but this is the piece we worked on last week. Um, you know, I really don't like the way it looks on camera, but I love it in per person. I did the silver um, moose streaks down here. I just carried them down from the top, put a few more of the transfers, the buds and branches transfer on. And so this week, I'll be staging that actually pretty soon. I'm just trying to decide if I want to put a stripe on the side. I was thinking like a pearlescent, really subtle one. But um, so anyway... I'll be working on this more live though, and I'm sorry I didn't get further, but thanks for hanging out tonight. You guys have a wonderful night. I wish this would dry up a little bit so you could at least see how it blended. Um, actually, once this dries, I'll go ahead and take a picture of it so you can kind of see what these drawers look like with that blend over there. Um, there's just too much of a glare on it while it's drying. But um, thank you guys so much. You guys take care. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great night, a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.